Welcome to a new video about PIFLAP and in this video I would like to show you some of the advanced hardware interactions that PIFLAP can do. And with this hardware you can finally PIV like a pro with PIFLAP. Here you can see the setup for today's video. So we have a camera, a little computer fan and the laser sheet optics. And the blue box on the bottom is the seating generator. This is an overview of how everything is connected, so you can have a look at it in more detail if you like. The little black box here is the synchronizer. And we use a PCO Panda camera for this uh, experiment here. It's a very nice camera with a very high resolution of 25 megapixels. Of course, then the frame rate isn't that high, but you can go up to like 15 Hertz with our laser. This camera is then connected to a laptop and also USB dongle is connected to the same laptop. Using a custom sheet optics we transform the laser beam into a light sheet and the first thing that I do now is that I place a calibration target into this light sheet. Now PitLab is started and I start the live preview of the camera. And actually you see nothing because there's a very effective bend pass in the camera. Therefore I added some high power LEDs with the correct wavelength to the camera mount. And these LEDs actually only turn on when the camera is exposing. So I'm doing this to save some energy and also to prevent the LEDs to become too hot. This little lens control interface allows me to play with the focus and also with the iris of the camera. And this is actually really handy, especially if you don't have access to the camera in some experiments. So this is the main reason why I added it. Another small feature is the um, camera attitude measurement, which allows you to check the roll and pitch angle of the camera throughout your experiment. Of course, I also wanted to add an automatic focus control. And that works really nicely. It's not the fastest autofocus, but it is a very precise and a very accurate uh, focus. It runs in two passes. So there's a coarse and a fine pass. And in the end, it focuses the yeah, maximum sharpness that it found. And the algorithm behind it is uh, super simple. It's just a differential in two dimensions on the image. And then it takes the absolute value of it and it really works very reliably. Now we are ready to set up the camera for the actual experiment. So we choose a binning. We can choose a binning of one in this case because we have enough light. Then we choose the region of interest. Um, there are several presets for this camera. So um, the smaller the region of interest, the higher the frame rate can be. And here I'm choosing a region of interest that only shows the uh, wake of my little computer fan. And after I applied the region of interest, it will do a quick test capture and it will tell me the maximum frame rate that it can reach. Now it is time to capture the calibration image, which is actually pretty quick and easy. Now it is already saved. And that brings me to the next feature that I would like to show in this video, which is the external device control. So you can start and stop the seating generator, which is also built here at Optolution. Um, you can uh, also control external devices. Here I connected the computer fan to one of our controllers and I can start and stop the computer fan. This computer fan is also equipped with a little fog light barrier. Um, so it gives a trigger signal each turn. And yeah, I will show you later why I added this. If you tick these checkboxes, then every time you start a PIV recording, these devices will also be turned on. Let's actually have a look at how the um, data looks like. So I'm starting a PIV recording without actually saving images. Um, it starts a seating device, it starts a little computer fan, and it starts a laser. And this is what we see. I can toggle between the images. One is, of course, always a little bit brighter than the other one. Yeah, and sorry for these recordings. I recorded everything with my mobile phone, with, uh, which has a rolling shutter, so it's not really optimal for making uh, YouTube videos. I can also enable a live histogram, so I can see if the exposure uh, with the laser looks good or not.
And then of course I can use the autofocus again to uh, focus perfectly on the particle pattern. This is pretty useful in many cases. And again, it takes some time, but yeah, it is really robust. And remember, these images are almost 25 megapixels, so it takes some time to process them too. When all these settings are finished, it's actually time to um, save some data, right? So I tick the save box, I select the amount of images or of image pairs that I want to record. And then I start the whole setup. Again, the seeding generator and also the computer fan will be started automatically when I start the measurement. And of course, they will also be stopped if the measurement stopped, right? If you look at the fan during this recording, then you will see that it is actually moving. So we're not capturing phase-locked um, PIV data, which is sometimes required, but we can also do this. That is uh, why I added this uh, forked light barrier. And first you have to actually um, enable your triggering device. So in this case, a computer fan must be moving. Then I enable the external trigger signal and the small synchronizer is now actually measuring the triggering frequency and it measured 33 hertz here. Then I have to add some numbers like the delay after the triggering pulse and also how many pulses I want to skip because my laser can only run with 15 hertz. I have to skip some of these um, trigger pulses. Um, I can turn off my fan again. And now I'm actually ready to capture phase locked data of the moving fan. If you look at the computer fan now, you can see that, yeah, it's capturing phase lock data. So it seems like the fan would not be moving, but of course it is moving. I'm setting up everything for a PIV analysis now, but yeah, I've shown in uh, earlier videos often enough how to do this. So I will skip the details here and just show you the result, which look like this. So this is the phase locked, but sort of time resolved data. Um, we have to add some image filters. I've also shown in earlier videos how you actually apply these and how you decide about the thresholds. So I will go through this very quickly here. But for the sake of completeness, I will load the calibration image that we captured earlier and perform a very quick and dirty calibration. So again, I select two markers on my um, quick and dirty calibration target. Um, I enter the true distance, which was something around like yeah, 80 millimeters or so. The time step is filled automatically by Pivla because it remembers um, the timing of the laser and then what we do is that we quickly calculate the mean flow velocity which looks like this and then we can also plot the velocity magnitude uh, as color-coded um, image and this is now the phase average of our computer fan it looks a bit weird but that's just the way this computer fan moves the air Thank you very much for watching this quick overview about the hardware interactions that PIVLAB can do. And I'm pretty sure that in the future I will add more stuff to PIVLAB. Thanks and bye-bye.